Back in the car for another vlog, finally. Let's zoom in a little bit. Here we go. Good way to start a vlog. All right, what's up guys? Eli here, back in the car for another vlog. It's been a little while, but we're back in it. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about a topic that I've been asked about a lot. A lot of you guys are asking, you know, how do you make your feature videos? How do you edit them? Stuff like that. So I wanted to talk about a couple tips for you guys, how to make a good quality car video. So making a good car video is kind of hard to talk about because there's really no such thing as a right video, if that makes any sense. There's no wrong way to make a car video. So this is all in my opinion. If you guys have different opinions, obviously you can leave them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to hear them, discuss about it. You know, I think it'd be a fun conversation piece. I think the biggest thing that makes car videos and most videos in general is variation. Now, variation means a lot of things. First of all, I'm when I think variation, as far as a car video goes, I think a lot of different style shots, be that, you know, detail shots, really wide shots, shots of the car moving, stuff like that. A lot of different types of shots really makes a video much more interesting than if you're just seeing... Ooh, that's too bright. Really makes a video much more interesting than if you're just seeing a car from one angle. Now, one angle is fun, and you know, if you have a bunch of wide shots of a car, the video is still gonna be nice, but if you have a variety of, you know, close up of the wheels and then a whole wide shot of the car and then maybe just the front half of the car or something like that. That's gonna really differentiate your video to start out with. Now, the second type of variation that I'm talking about would be actual variation of the gear that you're using to get those shots. Now, a lot of us start out with a tripod. My suggestion would be, if you don't have a tripod yet, go ahead and buy one. I have a tripod that was under $100. It has a fluid head, so you get really nice pans and up and down pans as well. It's a quality tripod. I'm not you know, paid to say any of this, but I think that this tripod is a solid tripod for the beginner. So I'll leave a link in the description if you're looking for a tripod, you might as well go pick that up because I think it's a good tripod. The worst thing to do tripod related is to buy a cheap photo tripod and then try to get smooth pans with a jumpy head. It just, it doesn't work. So I would recommend a good video tripod. So after that, I would recommend buying a slider or something along those lines that allows you side to side movement along with panning movement. So now you have some shots that are panning side to side and you also have some shots where the camera stays still as far as side to side motion goes, but it actually physically moves side to side. So you're not turning the camera, you're sliding the camera. And that adds another really cool dimension to a uh, video. Now, I think the final thing that a lot of people use is a DSLR or video camera gimbal. Now what this is, is a three axis gimbal that you would actually hold in your hands and it balances your camera and makes everything look really smooth. That's where you get a lot of the shots, you know, people walk up to the cars and they pan upwards or something like that. The really cool stuff comes from DSLR gimbals and I'm a big fan. I think I'm actually gonna pick one up this year. I'm finally gonna bite the bullet. They're very expensive though. So I would say for most feature videos, you are golden with a tripod and a slider. I, I think that's you know good enough. And if you get more than that, then obviously that's great. But I think you can make most feature videos with a tripod and slider, like Sam and I did with the VMR video. If you notice in that video, we actually got a lot of different shots. There's shots with different backgrounds. There's also shots where the car is moving, the car is stationary. We have close-ups of the wheels. We have shots far back. And I think that video was a good demonstration of variation. I think we could have varied our shots even more and it would have been even better. But I think that video is a good demonstration of variation. So that's enough of my rant on variation. My biggest do not for any sort of car video or really any video in general is using stabilization. Now, a lot of people make these videos and they say, oh yeah, this shot has a little bump in it, but I'm gonna use it anyway. I'm just gonna turn on stabilization. Now, a lot, a lot, a lot of people that watch your videos will never notice that you turn on stabilization. But when I make my videos, especially my feature videos, I wanna make them so that I can sit down with a friend who might not be a car person, but is a film person or a video person and enjoys a good video and have them watch that and not notice the flaws. I think for those that really wanna take it a step further, get the shots right the first time. And if you have them right the first time, you'll never need to turn on stabilization. And 
That also comes with doing multiple versions of the same shot. If you just take one panning shot and move on to your next shot, if that shot's no good, you're not gonna know until you get back to when you're editing. And then you're gonna be like, oh man, I have to use stabilization because I really want this shot and I don't have a smooth version of it. So taking multiple versions of a shot will help you avoid stabilization and stabilization is the number one thing that I would say avoid when you're making feature videos. My second suggestion is music related. Now I think besides the variation of shots, the biggest part that makes or breaks a video is actually the music selection. So I spend solid hours, I mean hours, looking for music online. Now the biggest thing not to do is, I'm sure if you make videos for YouTube you know this already, but you cannot use copyrighted music. Copyrighted music will get flagged on YouTube and a lot of the times it'll prevent you from either making money off of the video or it'll actually block the video in certain countries and on mobile devices or something like that, which means that it's really hard to get people to view your video if it's blocked in you know 150 countries worldwide. Now royalty free music is its own you know dilemma. I'm just gonna say it right now, a lot of it is bad. The thing that's really gonna differentiate your video is the music, but you need to find royalty free music and you also need to find royalty free music that kind of fits the mood of your video. A lot of the times I'll start editing and I'll say you know what, this song just doesn't work and I'll go back to the drawing board and go find another song. I think when you find the right song, you really know, and when you put that whole video together to that right song, it really just puts it on a different level than if you said, oh hey, I'm just gonna you know, find this song and I'll, I'll use it, whatever, you know, good enough. My second biggest do not is don't expect this to be a five minute deal. Um, if you're making a 15 second video for Instagram, maybe it'll be you know, five minutes of editing or something like that, but if you really wanna make a full feature video, you need to put the time in. And I know it kind of stinks because everybody's like, how do you get the cuts to, how do you get the cuts in time to the music, stuff like that. I do it all by hand. There's no program that's gonna be like, oh hey, yeah, just put it in here and we'll cut your video to the music and it'll look great. No, a lot of this just comes from time spent editing the video and it stinks because, you know, we, we all have busy lives and to sit down and spend a ton of time editing a video is not necessarily the most fun thing all the time. You know, there are times when I'm in the mood to edit video and I will sit down and just grind for six hours straight or seven hours straight, but there are other times when, there are other times when I just don't wanna edit a video whatsoever. My suggestion would be do not just kind of half-ass and not put in as much effort as you could because it's gonna take a lot of time. If you're feeling like it's taking too much time, stop shut the editing program, go do something else, and come back to it You know, two hours later or something like that. If you're not feeling inspired, then there's no point in editing right then. My third and final suggestion, and this is kind of a do and do not in itself, is watch other people's videos, watch other feature videos. Um, I take a lot of my inspiration from just random feature videos that I find online, but my do not that comes with watching other people's videos is don't try to make your video their video. Now. Casey Neistat is the perfect example. And Jerry Batista and I actually talked about this in our six suggestions on how to be successful on YouTube video. Now Casey Neistat is the perfect example of this. Casey has beautiful time lapses. He's very, very good at sequencing. And he just, you know, overall makes great videos. But Casey Neistat makes Casey Neistat's videos. I cannot make a Casey Neistat video no matter how hard I try because I'm not him. So. I know they say imitation is the highest form of flattery, but when you're making a video, it's okay to take inspiration from other people, but don't try to make your video exactly like them. You know, if, let's say you see a video filmed in a parking garage and it came out really cool. Sure, go to a parking garage, make a video, but don't copy everything that that person did in their parking garage video and put it in your parking garage video. That's just, you know, that's not cool. One, it's not gonna be unique. Not as many people are gonna like it or watch it. And two, you know, you're losing that creative expression that you have. A feature video is, you know, your open canvas. You can really do whatever you want in that video. And to copy someone else is really just, you know, kind of giving up on that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video about how to make a successful video. If you haven't already, make sure to go back and check out my VMR feature video. Let me know how I did on that. I also have a double S4 feature video that I did a while back. I'll put links to both of those in the description. And by the way, you should head over to Instagram and follow IgnitionTube. It's at IgnitionTubeYT for YouTube because apparently the account IgnitionTube is taken even though no one has the account IgnitionTube. I, I don't understand. 
Instagram won't let me do it. But go over and follow them. While you're there, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Eli Rubin 123 and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take it easy.